Welcome back. I'm Tamara Washington here repping the remnants. Shout out to our Win in the Spirit family, the Win Church. God bless you all. Pastor Singletary, thank you, sir, for giving us a platform to just share God's word. We're super excited about this series that we've been going through. I'm saved. Now what? We thank you all for joining in. If you've missed any of the videos, go ahead and head back and watch them. We are coming to a close. We have a few more videos left for this installment in this series, but we are coming to a close. So if you've missed any, go ahead and head back. Check them out. Today we're going to be covering our gifts, okay? I'm going to do just an intro of our gifts. How do we get them? Do we already have them? What are they for? When are they to be used? All that good stuff. And we will follow then with another video on gifts part two, giving you more details and in-depth explanation of our gifts. All right, y'all ready? Let's go. So let's get into it. Gifts, our spiritual gifts, are our gifts from God. Let's just go ahead and define what they are. They are special divine empowerments, abilities, or capacities given to each and every one of us by God. These gifts are graciously given by the Lord. And why do we have these gifts? What are these gifts to be used for? These gifts are given to us by God to edify the believers in the body of Christ. Okay, they are given to us by God to edify or to instruct, to improve, to enlighten, to inform, to build up to bring spiritual and moral improvement, to bring growth to the body of God, to the body of Christ. They are to profit, they are to enrich, to, to equip the body of Christ. That is what our gifts are for. That is the purpose of our gifts. They are not for selfish gain. They are to help profit, edify, and equip the body of Christ. And we all have a variety of gifts. We all have a cluster of gifts. Nobody just has one or none. <laughs> we all have a cluster of gifts. And those gifts work together in the body of Christ to help profit and grow the church, okay? And I'll get into that a little bit later, but we all have a differing of gifts. We don't all have the same gifts. There's diversity within the gifts, and that's a good thing, and we'll talk about that in a second. But when do we get our gifts? For the most part, our gifts are already instilled in us. Most of us have already in our possession our gifts that God has given us. We just may not be fully aware that they're gifts. We may not recognize them as gifts. But most of what our gifts are, are already within us and we are already using them. Whether we're using them correctly or whether we're using them unto the glory of God, that's the question. But some or most of our gifts are already within us. Things that we're naturally good at, things that we naturally enjoy, things that we can do with effortless effort <laughs> most of those are usually giftings that we have for example one of my giftings is gift of service or helps 
it comes very natural for me I don't have to really work at it when I see a need I just jump in and help it doesn't really take a second thought if there's a need present if I can be of help if I can be of service I will and it's it's easy for me to do and I did not have this knowledge because this was a gift until I, I was given knowledge of it and I was going able to go into the scripture on it and begin to read that this is in fact a gift not everyone has it not everyone is willing <laughs> to just jump in and help when they see a need so um but that came with more knowledge of my giftings on the other hand some giftings do take time some gifts do take development and growth and they may not come or they may not be revealed or you may not be able to walk in them until you mature to a certain level in Christ and then when God sees fit then he may begin to slowly reveal those gifts to you or allow you to begin to walk in those giftings okay so most of our gifts are already within us but there are some that come as we continue to grow in Christ I have some giftings now at this point in my relationship with Christ that I did not have early on and it was a good thing um, had I had the clarity of some gifts that I have now it may have scared me away a little bit um, or I might have shied away from that gifting because I didn't understand it or because I felt overwhelmed by it so um, God is wise in revealing certain gifts to us at the right time so what else should we know about our gifts number one they are diverse we have a variety of giftings and not all of us have the same giftings there's diversity within giftings and that is a good thing um, you may have a gift that someone else does not have or someone else may have a gifting that you do not have and it's okay and it's a good thing I amen do not have the gift of pastoring that is not one of my giftings However, Pastor Singletary does have it, and it's a good thing. What if nobody had the gift of pastoring? You know, what if nobody had the gift of missions? What if no one had the gift of prophecy? What if we all had the gift of tongues, but nobody had the gift of interpretation? Or what if everyone had the gift of discerning of spirits but nobody had the gift of exorcism <laughs> you know like it's a good thing that there's diversity let's put some scripture on it first Corinthians 12 I will read the first first five or six verses um, you can go back and read thoroughly it gives a good pretty a pretty decent list of the giftings it, there's a large variety of giftings it's not just subject to what is presented here but this this is a, be, a good beginning here in first Corinthians 12 so let's start here verse 1 now concerning spiritual gifts brethren I do not want you to be ignorant you know that you are Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols however you were led Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. And then it goes in to list some of the giftings. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, prophecy, discerning of spirits, on and on. As I said, you can go back and read. That's 1 Corinthians 12. So 
there's diversity within the giftings and it's a good thing like I said we all bring them together and that is how we are able to profit and lift up and build the body of Christ and even though we may not all have the same giftings there are definitely things that all of us should be striving to accomplish according to the will of God for our lives as believers okay so I'm just gonna go through just a few of them a few of the specific things that Jesus reveals to us concerning the heart of the Father okay the first one is that we be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth that is the will of the Father that we are all saved and come to the knowledge of the truth that is first Timothy 2 3 and 4 God's will is that no one perishes God's will God's heart is that all come to a saving knowledge of him he does not want anyone to perish hell was not even created for us that is not the desire of his heart he desires that no one be lost, but that we all be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Second, God's will is that we come to full sanctification. I know we've probably heard that before. It's a big word. Let's break it down. Sanctification is simply to be made holy or to make holy. Um, let's break it down even further. To be free from sin. A will of the Father is that we are brought to full sanctification, full freedom from sin. That is the heart of the Father. And we have that. We that believe we have that privilege to be completely free. There is no bondage in Christ, okay? Sanctification can also be described as being set apart for the use of the intended intention by the designer. That is the desire of God's heart, that we be so set apart that we come to a place that we are only being used for what he intended for us to be used. That we are accomplishing that of what our designer, our creator intended for us to accomplish. That is the will of the Father. And one last one, it's not part of the Ten Commandments, but it is a command that Jesus gave before he left this earth, and that is the Great Commission. One of his final teachings is the Great Commission. Matthew 28, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. That is one final command that Jesus gave us to go out and preach the gospel, spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And that does not depend on your giftings. We all can do that. We all should be doing that. So let's just review our giftings. Our spiritual gifts we all have them they all come in clusters some you have now some you have had for a while and some you will develop and or begin to experience as you grow in Christ and they are all for the edification and the profit and the growth and the building of the church of God the body of Christ that is what our gifts are for and for God's glory. They are not for our own selfish ambition or gain or pride. They are for the building and growing of the body of Christ. And even though we may not all have the same giftings, we all are to walk in the same will that God has for us. That is to be saved, that is full sanctification, that is growth in him, and that is spreading his good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's all I have for you. As I said, we'll be coming back again with a part two to get more in-depth information on our giftings. I hope this at least 
made you think about some things even even now if you don't know your gifting just begin to think of some things that come natural to you some things that you know you're really good at and, and you enjoy doing it and it takes nothing no effort for you to do and it sets you apart from other people just begin to think about that that might be a gifting that God has given you and if you know your giftings already I would highly encourage you to continue or begin to walk in them as God orchestrates and instructs you so comment below if you do know your gifts I want you to comment below what your giftings are if you don't know what your giftings are comment what you think your giftings might be and if you're interested in learning more about your gifts our church actually has an excellent gift assessment test so if you are interested I want you to just drop some comments below again if you know your giftings let us know if you don't know your giftings but you might have an idea or you're interested in learning your giftings stay tuned we have a part two and we also have information for you if you are interested in taking a gift assessment test that's all i got for you guys continue to keep us in your prayers we will continue to keep you in our prayers and we will all continue to grow and build and follow in the steps that god has orchestrated for each of our lives Thank you all. Be blessed.